One of the things I love about checkerboard quilts is the contrast they provide. However, with a little fun tweak on the math, we can also get a bit of an illusional effect going as well. Today's tutorial is going to teach you both tricks. Let's get started. Yes, speaking of contrast, this line I think is perfect. This is Twilight by One Canoe Two for Moda. And when I say contrast, I'm not only speaking of color, but also visual texture. Check this out. What I love about it is I've got some floral and some of these graphic style prints that I'm using, but I'm also using darks and lights together to create that checkerboardy effect. Now, what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna make strips from our yardage, and you can make this quilt any size you want. Our finished block, is gonna be roughly eight and a half like this, but I've designed the mathematics that you can get from your free printable. So drop into that link in the description below and get yourself a free printable. And you can see right here off of a 10 inch square, we're gonna make a four inch cut, a three inch cut, a two inch cut, and a one inch cut. Now, when I played with my original prototyping of this block, I was cutting everything originally first. And I realized by doing this as strip sets, it's so much easier and actually, I believe, more accurate also. That's how I'm gonna teach you all today. So even if you're working with 10 inch squares, just cut strips to begin with. Don't cut it all the way into the squares and rectangles. Now, with that said, let me show you. Here is a strip set that I've already been working with and cut from. You'll see here again, there's a four inch, a three inch, a two inch, a one inch. The rotation is just light to dark, light to dark. And we also need to make opposite color ways. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start building another strip set for all of us to work with. So let's just go ahead and fold this up out of the way a little bit. And what I do with these strip sets, because the width of each strip is gonna get narrower as I always start sewing with my widest, my four inch piece, and then I put on my three inch piece. And I'm always sewing up here from the top to maximize what I have available in my strip. So dark, light, next comes my dark here, like this, but also four, three, two. We're just going down in size. Now, if you don't sew your strips like this, one of my tricks is I use a shorter stitch length. So I'm using a two instead of a 2.5 and that helps me get a nice even stitch without waffling. So I don't have to go up one direction and back down the other. So we're just gonna go through this nice and quick. I like to take the time to stop and really reorganize my fabrics here. And then we'll punch the gas. Now this is going beautifully. The other trick to having these turn out real nice and accurate is actually to press at each seam. So what we're gonna do over here, where I lay in the work that's already right sides up, right out of the machine. And then I like to just use my iron like this. I just kind of get in here and press up against the thread first, push this over like this. Okay, so we've got that pressed nice there. And now we're gonna add on the skinny strip, the little one inch. And some of you that have had challenges in the past with little skinny narrow strips, the reason we put all of the big stuff down first is that little skinny strip's gonna ride that big wide strip nice and easy. We shouldn't get any bowing or any problems that way. Sometimes if I have the small stuff down first, I find that it doesn't turn out as precise. Okay, we're gonna press this. And as I'm pressing this, let's talk about some of the fun combinations we can make. I've been playing with these fabrics in a couple of different ways. So I mixed lights and darks like you see here with my print. So I've got the more the graphic print and then the other blocks I'm gonna show you here in a moment have the floral pieces together. But I've also mixed prints and florals. So you could actually make like four different kinds of strip sets and blend them together. Uh, you can do it all with the exact same two strip sets, just lots of them. So the checkerboarding effect this way, we're using multiple prints, gives you a little more to look at, which I love. 
but I also like that high, high contrast. So I've got another sample I'll show you at the end of the video here, give you another idea of what you can do with this project. Okay. Now, we have our strip sets made and I'll encourage you to make all that you need at first before you get into the cutting process. Now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna get it ready to cut. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna square up the end. And as I get ready to square up this end, what I'm actually looking at is the way the lines run through the ruler to make sure that this is nice and square to the work I've just done. Not normally left-handed, I'm gonna cut like a left-handed person, so I'm gonna be careful as I do that. Nice. Now, from here, because we had made four, three, two, and one inch strips this way, we're gonna do them going this way too. So I'm just gonna slide the ruler over. I like to cut big strips first because if I ever make a mistake, I can make a big strip into a smaller strip, if you know what I'm saying. So here's my four. Then I need a three. A two. I'm still looking at these lines here. And a one, and your one inch cut is gonna be your sensitive cut, so make sure everything is nice and accurate. And there's our one inch cut, very easy. Now, I would just continue the progression and keep going down, and I think I'll get another, uh, enough for at least two more blocks out of that strip. Now, I did already have these prepared from the floral strips and already pre-cut them down uh, into the same widths of the bands, the fours, the threes, the twos, and the ones. So now we're just gonna start mixing our blocks together because I want to basically reproduce this block here. So I'm gonna start with this large dark um, geometric print so I can omit these two pieces from this block. And now I'm going to set in four, now, three opposite colors. That one's gonna slide into there. And then I'll do this this way. And then as I approach the sewing machine, I'm gonna still use my largest pieces first. What I wanna do is I want to lay the three inch on top of the four inch. And I'm gonna to come to the sewing machine right now. And I still want the biggest piece down on the feed dogs. And due to the nature of the seams here, right now I've got the kind of the heavier side of the seam hitting where the needle's going. So I'm using a stiletto to kind of flatten that down. And I'm also then using the seam allowances to match up to keep things accurate as I go. Here we go. Use that stiletto to keep your fingers safe. All the way through there. And I'm actually gonna take the time at each seam again to just go ahead and press as I go. And by doing it this way, I'm actually building the bulk of my quilt work or my patchwork away from the machine. So now I can just add my two on top of my three. Just matching up those seams. And then after I press this last one, we're gonna put the little one on. Okay, so I'm just gonna come up here. And this is what forms that cool little one by one square in the corner at first, or the three quarter by three quarter square in the corner when we're finished sewing it up. Oh, got away from me a little bit there. <laughs> Be careful, everyone. Oops, that folded over and I'd rather that not happen. I caught it just in time by lifting the presser foot up, get that seam back a little more tidy if possible. All right. And now as I get ready to put this together, I'm just gonna to start to point out, maybe you can look at the quilt behind me. And for that size quilt right there, you're looking at 42 of these squares because I was basing it off of if you were using a 10 by 10 pre-cut. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I did just make my own strips because I just wanted to use the color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build our squares back together and you can start by putting your large squares together like this. 
here to form your checkerboard. That works real easy, especially if you haven't worked with real small seams, but the same thing works the same way. So let's do it this way just to show you how it's going to go together because I love these little narrow seams. So I'm going to take these two small one inchers. I'm going to lay them together this way and I'm going to head over to the machine. Now the nice thing at the moment as I'm looking at it, I can see that those seam allowances are working in my favor. And I'm still just lining up the seam allowances as we go, helping make that all match up nice. I am back stitching at the corners over to the iron. Same trick, I'm just holding the new piece in the air. And then what you're going to want to do, but be careful, come back to your design wall, come back to the table. You want to make sure you sew the correct seams back together now. So this one was right here. So I want to make sure I sew these one inch seams together. So I'm going to flip it here and I'm going to pinch it and I'm going to go straight to the machine to make sure that I don't accidentally stitch the wrong direction. This time those seams are not working in my favor. So I'm getting my little stiletto back in there to keep my fingers safe. And then we'll just finish this out. Okay. And then just your last double check when you come back together, make sure you're getting the little squares in together, not the long rectangles. So I'm going to hold to the machine. We did it. So let's press it before I show you how awesome it looks. There we go. And so this is going to give us four by four kind of layout with our patchwork, just like that. And that, as I said, will go together into this quilt. There's 42 of them up there, but I want to show you one of my early experiments, just so you get an other idea, a little higher contrast, in my opinion. This one here is done with all just batiks. And what I really like is the really intensity of not having the prints in something like this. So my challenge for you today in the comments is I want to hear what two colors you're going to use, but I want to hear, are you going to go with prints? Or are you going to go with batiks and solids for that extra energy that you find right here? at man sewing oh hey are you still in here i thought you would have been checking out some of those other great videos you know we've got a link there over there and hey don't forget to subscribe make sure you never miss a minute of the action we'll catch you next time at man sewing